and welcome to volume two of advanced frame advanced element kayak care and maintenance Ooh. inspection repair Five. and uh, i'll tell you today is going to be fun uh, i have the uh, expedition out today now if you notice this one does have the rudder on it and so there's a lot more things to check what we're going to do is do a basic hull inspection and how to check for leaks if you think you have a leak what to do and that's what you see back here this is the uh, main chamber for the sport and this is the drop stitch floor for the sport being that the sport is still drying from uh, the event from the other day and then i'm actually uh, gonna wash this one all down just the exact same way i did in uh, volume one for cleaning but that'll be after this taping so what I want to do now is get over and show you what comes with your craft as far as your patch kit and stuff like that. There's some unique things. So let's set that up right now. All right, guys, in the back of your seat, when you receive your specific kayak, you will have a color specific repair kit. Now, this is the one for the Expedition. It comes with two of the polyester patches. It comes with... Uh, two of the hull material patches. This is for your bladders. And this one is for the main chamber enclosure. Uh, also comes with a uh, tube of glue. You can see I've used this. And it comes in this nice little pouch. Okay, also with your uh, patch kit that comes in the back of the seat, you will receive two adapters. This is for the military spring valve. And it depends on what model you get if it has a uh, drop stitch floor and here is the drop stitch adapter that also comes in the back of your seat the other patch kit which is offered by advanced elements comes with a lot of stuff the kit comes with the uh, adhesive which is the same as aqua seal an instruction kit two three by nine pvc strips two three by nine pvc tarpaulin that's for your hull and then it comes with uh, three different three by six polyester with PVC. Uh, that's what comes in this kit. Now, this particular color scheme would not work on my craft that I'm working with today. It has the blue, but that's okay. Now, the one that comes in your kit with your boat will match the color of your specific craft. Okay, guys, what you want to do here is to do a complete hull inspection. Uh, I do this every time I come back. Now I will be doing a patch repair today. I had one of my patches lift. You can see it right here. So it'd be a good example to, to do this. Apparently it didn't set up right. And this is not fully inflated. It's just partially inflated, but I'm doing a, a complete hole inspection. I see one little tiny hole back here. Let me get the camera on that. Now I see one little tiny puncture right here. Now, does it go all the way through? No, but this will be a good example of doing a daub repair. And we're gonna do that right now. And we're just gonna do a daub repair. Now what I'll do is take a little bit of aqua seal or your, um, the glue that you have. And I just do a little bead right here. Okay, now that is good to go. Just let that sit and let it dry. And you'll be good to go. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is, uh, I'm actually gonna do a patch patch repair. But basically you take your pair of scissors out, you cut the, uh, the patch size that you want. And I take 220 sandpaper, and I'm gonna go in here and just score this a little bit. And the same thing with the patch piece. Okay, and then I'm going to apply the adhesive. Now I do both sides. Now you want to let that get tacky before you drop your weight on it. Now I'm going to use a small brick. Right now I'm just letting that tack up. Okay, while that glue is tacking up, I'm inspecting the rest of the hull. Now, I actually lay a bead of adhesive around the edges of that, so it kind of acts like a bead seam. Inspection of the hole on this one, uh, you can see I've had a few 
hits here, 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 and now the one back here. Uh, but that's just the nature of the beast, guys. Oh, if you notice these black marks, that's my floor alignment marks. Uh, you can go to another one of the video when I talk about aligning your drop stitch floor. It explains that. Now, once this is tacked up, just press it down. Is what I'm doing here. Then put your weight on weight that you've uh, selected for it. In this case, I'm using a brick, and just set that right there. And I let mine cure for uh, 24 hours. Actually, you don't have to. You can go 12. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is run on these patches I did before. I'm going to run a seam sealer on it using the same adhesive, uh, and it's just. It's just for me to do. Uh, I just want to make sure that this lifted, and that's probably because I didn't do that. So I've added this to my repair process now. I'll let the patch sit, and then as soon as it sets down, then I'll run a bead around that seam. So that's what we're going to do right now. So again, all I'm doing is going to run a small bead around the seam of this right here. Now you don't have to do this, but it takes that sharp edge away. Now that, now that patch seam is sealed. I'm going to do the same thing to this small patch I did before. And run this bead just around the edge of the patch to where it seals those edges. And that way if you do catch something underwater, like a branch or something, it won't lift your patch. Okay, that bead seal is done. Okay, so the repair portion of this patch repair on the hull is complete. So what I want to do now is uh, show you, and this is really a no-brainer, guys, but I want to show the new people that's never done this before uh, how to check for pin leaks in your main bladder and your uh, drop stitch floor or your stock floor either or oh by the way in about five hours I'm gonna come out here and run that bead seal around the patch I just did and it should hold really well but I love the way it seals that and makes that a smooth transition so you don't have a sharp edge on that uh, patch anyway so what we're gonna do now guys is we're gonna go ahead and show you how to check for leaks here uh, a bathtub will work uh, swimming pool, which is what I'm going to use today. And you don't want to fully inflate them. Hi right, guys, this is one of the deck lift bladders from that Elite, which I overinflated and blew it out. Now, you will know that you have to replace it if the seam is blown out. If you see here, this one is really, really blown out. Now, if you get a seam burst like this here, you cannot fix it. You have to replace it. Now, when I'm uh, testing for air leaks and stuff like that, I take the cap off the valve. And the reason is that if there's a leak here, I won't be able to find it, okay? So basically all I do is submerge it and check for bubbles. I got none there. Nothing here. Now, if there was a leak on the bottom anywhere, that water, if you see I'm submerging it, that also checks that valve. And this one checks out fine. So no leaks in this. Check. No. Hi guys, we're gonna do a leak test on the main bladder. Now this is off the AE1017 Sport. Now if you notice, I have the valve facing down and no cap on it. That's to check for any valve leaks uh, that is happening in your in your fill valve. And if you have a valve leak there, if you have the cap on, you won't find it. So, I'm doing here is just holding and waiting to see if there's any stream of bubbles and there is not, so that's good. Now I'm just gonna go around submerging the bladder Uh, 
All right, I'm gonna recheck that. No, we're good. Thought I had a problem there. Nothing here. I'm checking the top of the main here. Nothing coming there. Spin it around, do the same process, then I'll flip it over and check the other side. Okay, we're good. Now I'm going to flip it and check this side. I got nothing. Then spin it around. And nothing. So we are good. But that's how you check it for leaks. And then if you find a leak, use your patch material coming in your kit. Make sure you use the right one to match with the material you're patching. Well, guys, the inspection and repair process is over. I hope it was informational to you. Uh, one of the things I want to tell you is every time I come off the water and I get ready to do my drying time, uh, one of the things I do when I dry my craft is I partially inflate it. Not 100%, but partially because it's going to be in the hot sun. I don't want it to expand and blow out the main bags. But anyway, uh, when I do that, I get it inflated and I turn the boat over and do a complete hull inspection every single time. And then if I see something, then I fix it. Okay. Uh, adding the patch seal rib... I think it's a really good idea. It's something I started doing a while back uh, where I didn't before. I just put the patch on and it was all good. Uh, now I just want to add that because I think it would lift. And the, the patch repair we did here today was part of the, the patch repair that I had lifted. And it could have been because of the fold. It could be a lot of reasons. So adding that outside beam seal along the edge of the patch rim I think is really, really going to help. Uh, also, when you do your inspection repair, you don't have to pull the boat totally all the way to, apart. If it performed well, didn't lose air, you're good. Then you can just do a hull inspection. Uh, check the other things like your seat, seat straps, uh, all those kind of things. There's more to this than just the hull and the bladders. You have your seat. Are the clips still working right? Uh, are, is the webbing frayed? All that kind of good stuff. Now, if in case you have a rudder, like on my, uh, my Elite, you want to check the butt cap to make sure that it's still adhered correctly. Uh, you want to check the condition of the cables, see if there's any fraying or anything like that. Check the blade, check the operation, do the pedals and stuff like this to make sure everything is fine. And then you know when you go back out, everything's going to work. So... That's my best advice here. Now, what I'm going to do with this craft after this patch dries out, uh, I'm going to go ahead and scrub it like I did sport and get this one all cleaned up. Hasn't been cleaned up a little while, and uh, so I want to get that done. All right, guys, so this will wrap it up. The next volume is volume three, and that is assembly, disassembly. A lot of people have a lot of interest on this. Now, we're going to take it all the way down. I mean, bare bones. I'm going to show you how to realign the frames and get them in their, their uh, respective upper and lower sleeves. Because if you don't, they're going to shift around on you. I had one uh, viewer come in and this was bent all the way up here like that. And he sent me a picture and he said, is there something wrong? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I, I drew him an illustration on how to straighten that all out. He got it straightened out and was able to get it into the sleeve because he couldn't understand why... It wouldn't work and apparently the only way I can figure is that bent piece up here must have been laying on the side like that I'm, I'm not sure anyway uh, we're going to get into all of that stuff uh, how to take out the main chambers and I'm going to use the sport that I just cleaned the other day for that particular event uh, as far as reassembly goes because it's almost dry and then disassembly I'll probably use this one because it needs to be cleaned so for disassembly, I'll be using the Elite, and for assembly, I'll be using the Sport. So, so hey, stay tuned for Volume 3, Assembly, Disassembly.